All right, this is example 410 from your book. It is a the problem you drew the free body diagrams of earlier. We are asked to find the reaction forces at pin A and the tension in the cable coming from B. Okay, so let's start by drawing a free body diagram of the two components. All right, first we have the bar. It looks something like this. And there are two reaction forces, an X and a Y. Because it's the pinned connection. And then we also have a tension in the cable. And so we'll draw a force to represent the tension in the cable, okay? And let's label this T and this will be our A X and this will be our A Y, alright? The other thing is we know something about this tension and that is that it's at a 30 degree angle from the horizontal. Alright, so we know that this angle is 30 degrees. Then let's do the free body diagram of the cylinder. Okay, the cylinder has some weight. Acting down. Okay, then there is a reaction force due to the bar. Okay, and we'll just call that one the normal force. This is the weight. Alright, and then we have a force where the cylinder touches the wall. Okay, and we'll call that one, we can't call it W, we'll just call it um, F. Alright, now let's think what we know about that force F. One of the things we know is that this wall is at a 60 degree angle and this is like a box on an inclined plane then. So this angle is 60 degrees. Okay, which means that this angle from the horizontal, okay, for F is going to be 30 degrees. Okay. All right, so now let's look at what we want to start with. On the bar, I don't know any of these components. All right. However, I do know some things about the cylinder. So I think I'll start there. Okay, the cylinder has a weight of 2,500 pounds. Okay, so let's start with the cylinder. And do some of the forces x that's equal to zero. Okay, so we have the x component of f acting in a positive direction minus that normal force. 
Well, all that really tells me is then that I can so solve that for the normal force is equal to F X component. So the normal force is equal to F cosine 30. So I think I'll go ahead and do the sum of the forces y. That's also equal to zero. And we have the weight acting down plus the y component of f. So we have zero is equal to, that is 2,500 pounds, plus F sine 30 degrees. All right. So then we can say F is equal to 2,500 pounds divided by sine 30 degrees. I'm going to check that in my calculator just to be sure, but I'm pretty sure that's 5,000. And it is. So F is equal to 5,000 pounds. Alright. Then... In addition, we also have, now we can go back and get what that normal force is. So N is equal to F cosine 30, which is equal to 5,000 times cosine 30 degrees which is equal to 4,330 pounds. Okay. So now we know the normal force. We know the force exerted on the wall here, and we know the weight. So if you look, you'll also see I forgot to include the normal force on my bar this normal force. We also have one from the cylinder pushing on the bar, so I need to get, be sure that I've added that. Don't want to have missed that. Okay, and that is in. Okay, so now I think what I'll do is um, I, I need I have to work on something about the bar so let's start by doing the sum of the moments about a okay that's going to be equal to zero okay RAX and RAY don't matter because they're applied at the point. The normal force will cause a moment, okay? And so it will cause a clockwise rotation, which we say is a negative moment. So we would have negative N times four feet, okay? And then we this tension has an X and a Y component. The Y component is going to be in the line of action and won't contribute, but the X component will. So it will be also a negative moment, okay? Negative T times 8 feet. Okay, so now let, we can do just a little bit of substituting because we do know N. So that is equal to negative 2,500 pounds. Nope, that wasn't right. It was 4,330 
pounds times four feet minus T and this is actually the X component of T. Okay. So I'm just gonna slide this over so I have a little more room and you can see what's going on here. So we'll say zero equals minus T times that will be the X component of that T is right here, so it's 30 degrees. Times 8 feet. So that's equal to 1720.5 pound foot. That whole thing divided by okay, some 30 times 8. T is equal to, check my math there, or do my math, okay, T is equal to 2,500, and that's a negative 2,500 pounds, okay, why did I get it negative? Get a negative number. There's no such thing as a negative force. It can act in a positive or negative direction. What that tells me is I drew this arrow backwards. Okay, the head of the arrow actually goes here. Now I have to leave it like it is right now because I've already written equations depending on it being that way. So we're going to leave it that way for right now. All right. Now we need to find. Um, R-A-X and R-A-Y so we can just write our regular sum of the forces X is equal to zero is equal to alright we've got T acting in a positive direction times cosine 30 Okay, plus N minus RAX, which is equal to negative 2,500 cosine 30 plus 4,330.00. Minus R A X. Okay, so if I rearrange that, I get R A X is equal to two thousand five hundred cosine thirty. which is equal to two 
2,165 pounds. Okay. Now we do the sum of the forces y because all we don't know is a y right now. And that's equal to zero because we're at equilibrium, right? And the y forces are ty and are a y, right? So we have ty based on how we drew it plus r a y which is equal to negative 2,500 sine 30 plus R A Y. So we have R A Y is equal to one thousand two hundred fifty pounds. All right. So now we know everything we need to know about the external interactions and forces in our system.